Hunger Games. Hunger Games. Mockingjay Part 1 and 2. Mostly because huh. Part 1 is super boring. It's very, very forgettable. It there Nothing happens. <sighs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I was shocked. When I went and saw this in theaters, I was shocked that they would have the balls to make this a standalone movie and do nothing and make you wait another have, year or whatever it was until yeah. the next one came out. I'm pretty sure it was probably a year. I think so. We're close to it. They could have easily put this into one movie, you know, like it's one book. <laughs> yeah. And well, the books aren't even been big. Fine, the books aren't even. No, they're not big books. They're like, not Harry Potter. Like Harry Potter makes sense because so like the first Harry Potter book is probably comparable to a Hunger Games book. It actually might be longer than a Hunger Games book. I'm pretty sure it's 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 longer. But it, they're close. I think that's fair to say that the the first book in a Hunger Games book any is close. Hunger Games is just a standard size book. Like any book that comes out and well, then they make them into movies, that's just kind of what they are. Yeah, but what I was going to say is the first uh Harry Potter is probably similar. The last Harry Potter is like four times as big as the first one. And so it's like that makes sense why you would need to split that up. That Yeah. That doesn't quite feel as bad as The Hobbit or The Hunger Games. I was going to say The Hobbit being split into three movies. Or uh, Twilight being split into two movies. Like, those all felt like cash grabs. Oh, that's 100%. That's all they are. Where uh, Harry Potter felt more... It it definitely was a cash grab, but it at least felt more... Like, they use the space. They're like, well, since we have well, it's, an extra movie, yeah. we can do so much more that happens in the book also. Yeah, I feel like they're probably right in the in the dead zone between one and two, right? Where it's, if we try to get this in one movie, there's no way we can get it all. Yeah. All the, the necessary stuff and be a reasonable amount of time. But maybe two is like... A little too much, but we can make it work. Yeah. I'd rather have a little too much time than not enough time. Well, and I also felt like those two movies were actually pretty good. They're probably the best in the entire series. Uh, the last two? Yeah, of Harry Potter. Yeah, I agree. Um, but this, not the case at all. Um, worst movies in the series and did not need two standalone movies. No. So l- let's talk about the first one real quick and get that out of the way. Oh, please. Uh, she um, is becoming a symbol for the revolution. Right. So this one picks up right after number two, yep. where they are pulled out of the arena and taken to... 13. District, yeah, District 13. PETA, uh, along with a couple other people, have been captured by the Capitol, and they are captured. <laughs> Basically, they're taken to, yeah, they're taken to, dis- I know, it's compelling. Go they're ahead. captured, so they are captured people. <laughs> uh, they're taken to the District 13, which was previously thought to be, a, thought to have been destroyed. Turns out, was not destroyed. They do live underground. They still function as their own society in rebellion against the capital and that is where they are at the beginning of this movie yeah so katniss is very upset because no one saved pita and right. because no one cared well we find out no one cared if he lived or died we find out that coin the president actually wanted to save pita yeah she didn't really care for katniss but why didn't they save Peta? Can someone? Can, yeah, they if could you're have listening, to saved this, both. I just watched this movie, and I still have no idea why they didn't save Peta. Can someone please explain to me how Peta did not get saved? Anybody? Because any that changes reason. the whole. Not movie. you. You don't have good reasoning. <laughs> no, I definitely don't. I don't get it. I don't understand how they couldn't save him, especially. If he was the intended target. 
Uh, well, I don't think he was the intended target. Well, I that, think what he, what, what the guy was saying was she would have rather have been PETA, but ultimately we decided on Katniss. Yeah, maybe. But, but she wanted it to be PETA, not he was the target and they just couldn't get to him. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing that I can think of is maybe there wasn't a lot of people in there and they just weren't able to get him in time, right? Yeah. Maybe they can only grab one person at a time and he was gone by the time they got there. Yeah. Like, so I don't know. T- I, tell me, yeah, tell me what you think sense. about this idea. Okay. I'm going to Already pitch you better. a Hunger Games Mocking Jay, right? Okay. The second movie just came out. We're building up for the next one coming out at the end of the year. Instead of putting it in two movies, let's just make Hunger Games Mockingjay 2 exactly how it is. But release on the web all the propos, all the PETA speaking to Katniss, all that type of stuff. Every month, every couple weeks, release one of those things and show that building, 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 building. Hmm. Interesting idea. I will say that I hate the word "propo." I hate it <laughs> it's when they say it. It yeah. sounded so, it's so stupid dumb. to me. <laughs> I Propos. Hate, I hated it in the book too, but in the movies, it I don't really remember stood it out. being like that in the book. But maybe it, it didn't stand out to me in the in the book. But is is that like a combo of like propaganda, propaganda slash promo? Promo. Yep. It's a propaganda promo. A promotional pro- propaganda piece. Yeah. So, uh, propo. That makes, all right, okay, it makes sense now. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so your, your propos here, they would be essentially part one broken into little segments. Yeah, that just all go up on the YouTube. And then everything else, all the in between stuff, like, there's like 10 minutes that you actually need to build into Mark and J part two. Put that at the beginning of Mockingjay Part 2. Everything else, be a viral... So now Mockingjay Part 2 is just a longer movie? <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the trade-off. But... That's... The but, thing is, this already felt like way too long. It was very long. It was over two hours. But... Both of them were. If you don't have to watch the first one, I think it's much yeah. more manageable to get through. It could be. What would... What from Part 1 would you need, though... In part two that you couldn't do as a propo. <clears throat> Just the stuff actually in District 13. So her and Primrose, their relationship. Uh, what about the going around, you know, hooking up with the other districts? That's what I, that's what I mean. I think you could do all of that as a propo. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I think you can infer everything, everything else. Because they do. They film every key moment as a propo. Yeah. You could just here's, show here's that. Here's the problem. Uh-huh. Here's the problem. That doesn't make them any money. Um, it only costs them money. That's true. But it's better. I agree. <laughs> I, I, well, I agree it could be. I don't yeah. know. I'm not 100% on board with it yet. I'll have to wait and see what you come out with, and then I'll tell you then. Because <laughs> you you did get Jennifer Lawrence, right? Yes. And we are going to go forward with this thing. <laughs> um, but we can only use the money that we've gotten from our supporters. So if you want this to be better, you're going to have to step it up. People. <laughs> get over to Patreon. And now we're working on a, a $10 budget. <laughs> Um, yeah, so she goes around and films a bunch of stuff, films a bunch of propaganda. How do you not realize you're working for the enemy if you're actively filming propaganda? Yeah. For, I, to fuel the resistance. And it works. I have a few issues, um, with this movie. Yeah. One of them being, actually, this, this isn't really an issue. This is more like, um, Okay, I want to talk about there's two comparisons to the Marvel Cinematic Universe in this movie that I find interesting. The first one being she's almost like Captain America was, right? Yes. Where he's well known, but but he's not going to be used for 
what he thought he was going to be used for, and he's really just a, he's a piece. He's a propaganda. He's, he's a propo. Exactly. He, he they are living propos. Um, number two being the one I find more upsetting, and I can only assume that it's so bad that you will also agree. Disagree. When they are when. <laughs> I would love to hear your uh, defense of this point. All right. It's coming. Let me limber up a little bit first. Limber up. So they're – okay. It's – I want to say it's the – when they – whatever district they're in and they go to the hospital, mm-hmm. right? And then they leave the hospital and start getting attacked. Yes. So here come the uh, the, the fighter jets or uh-huh. whatever they're called. Yep. The fact that they shot these things out of the sky. Well, well, hold on. The fact that she shot one out of the sky. I do want to point out that Gail missed his target. Um, she shoots a who knows how fast flying jet out of the sky with an arrow. I don't know. Is that more or less likely to happen than Iron Man being shot out of the sky by a tank? Oh, okay. It's way more likely. One. That jet is so big and flying so slowly, you can okay. see it coming from so far away. Also, how far away? Uh, far enough to where you could get a beat on it. It's, I, you are, it would be harder to hit a fastball than it would be to hit that airplane with a bow and arrow. Okay. And, <laughs> and, okay. she had a special bow made by, what's his name? Twitch? Baby. BD. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> BD's not way. <laughs> I knew it was it. made by BD on his live stream Twitch. <laughs> that's what it was. That's what you're thinking of. That's why I was getting confused. He, she had a, a specialty bow made by BD with specialty arrows made by BD. So these are high tech, BD. high tech technology. And she is an expert bowsmith. Nope. She's, that's someone who makes bows. Nut. She's an expert archer. A a a a, a bow woman. A bower. She's a bower. expert. There it is. Uh I see zero issue with any of this. Completely I believable. I am all on board. When I saw it, I jumped out of my seat. I started pumping my fist in the air and I said, "Yes, Katniss did it. I can't believe it." But if everything that you just said is true, it's not. Then there's no reason for you not to believe it. You're like, oh yeah, obviously <laughs> she's gonna do that. You got I'd me. I'd be really disappointed if she missed, <laughs> like Gail. You got me. Um, you you painted me into a corner, sir. <laughs> now what? <laughs> no, I'm just like. Uh, no, yeah, it was I feel really like dumb. The tank. Hitting Iron Man is is would be easier because no, there's a chance that ta- that tank has some kind of homing device. Maybe it's no. high tech, more high tech than we thought. No, I, I I I do think Katniss hitting the airplane makes more sense than the tank hitting Iron Man. Think about also, how do you think how slowly that- a tank turret moves, how quick Iron Man was moving, how big the airplane is. And how fast Katniss can aim. Oh, jeez. You know what I'm saying? Still defending. No, well, against the tank and Iron Man versus Katniss in the airplane, Katniss in the airplane makes more sense. That's what I think the third movie should have been called anyways. Katniss in the airplane? Hunger Games Part 3, Katniss in the airplane. (laughs) Um, Here's the thing that I don't like. Mm Mm-hmm. About Katniss. She's the worst. It's, it's, it's one of my gripes also with John McClane from Die Hard. Ooh. Starts out as just an everyday person, right? Yep. Nothing special. Uh-huh. But by the end of what, Die Hard 4 or 5? 3. They're, th- even 3. They're doing ridiculous. He's doing like ridiculous things that like only a, like a super special secret agent or something should be able to do. Yeah. Like, remember, you're just a cop. Yep. Not that I'm taking away from cops. I know most of them can probably do what John McClane does. Yeah, well, but like, my you buddy, don't have any special training. My buddy Jesse literally um, ran up a collapsing bridge and jumped onto a jet just last week. 
Oh, well, okay, but if this jet was moving as slow as the one in the Hunger Games, then that's not even that hard to do. <laughs> and it was probably bigger. Anyways, uh, I don't like that now she starts off as like, she's a good hunter, right? She can, mm-hmm. she's very capable with a bow and arrow. Yeah. We've seen that, but she's not perfect. No. We saw her miss a couple times in either the first or the second time. We saw her miss her target in, uh, in her evaluation. Yeah. Like she's not perfect. She's not Hawkeye. No. But she's good. She's definitely but by the no end, Hawkeye. I like. I'm kind of offended. You would even put them in the same category. Oh, I'm not. That's why I said she's. But even no Hawkeye. even to consider Hawkeye that is a really to, good Hawkeye, though. You have to say that they're not the same. Is offensive. That'd be like Whatever. saying you had no, you had no problem when I compared her to Captain America. Well, Captain America is lame. Oh. That hurts. But anyways, by the end, by by the fourth uh, movie, when they're being chased by those creatures in the, the mutts. in the underground, the mutts, she was she was all over the place. She, she was hitting everything. Super she quick, had close so combat. So many arrows too. Yeah, and she was she was she was like a female Legolas. Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. You know how he fights where it's like real close combat bow and arrow, which is not exactly what it's Somehow, intended for, but she's more manly than Legolas was though. It's the hair. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Nope, it's the ears. Nope, it's the guy who played Legolas. <laughs> uh, uh no, I like I, I like Orlando Bloom. Sorry, I know he's a listener. I, I that was a joke. I told you I was gonna s I, I told you that was coming. <laughs> Uh, but it was, it was a little, it's a little too much to see. Well, same with her go from what she was to going to ease. But, but Phoenix a little different because maybe, and it's not quite set up in the books or in the, in the movie, but I remember in the books, he is like an expert with, with his trident. Like that's what they do where they live. And like, that's what he trained with. That's how he won his first hunger games. And that was, that's like his weapon of choice. And he's like, well, Trained in, right? the, in the second Mockingjay. In I, I think let's just talk about the whole both movies. I, I'm, That's yeah. I don't think anyone care. cares if we go through it in order. Fennec. I don't think we care. <laughs> Fennec is basically using a pickaxe. He's using a three-headed pickaxe. He's not even using a trident. In this one, in number four. Yeah. Are you sure? Uh huh. I thought it was a trident because he was stabbing with it. It was like the the spikes would move, but it was like a more like a pickaxe, more like a mace with spikes on the end of it. Oh, okay. Um, Wait, isn't that what a mace is? N- well, no. Like a, uh, do you know what a pickaxe is? Yes, I know what a pickaxe is. So it's like that, but with three spikes. Mm, still seems like just a trident to me. Do you know what a trident is? Yeah, it's a trident is like a pitchfork. Gum. Yes, I am well aware of a trident. So I have like four of them. <laughs> a pickaxe and a trident, or a pickaxe and a pitchfork, are not very similar. No, not at all. So if you have a pickaxe, but it's got three spikes going in the same direction a pickaxe would go, just in three different directions. So like a grappling hook. Yes. Oh, maybe I just couldn't see it very well. I, did, I don't remember it looking like that. Um, but he was using it. He was like stabbing him, swinging, going back and forth. And it just, I don't know what, I, he was like a superhero. Then, and all the victors were. Then that's what kind of bothered me about the second one, or part two, is movies do this where they put these people who really aren't that capable with soldiers who oh yeah should be capable and the soldiers are always the ones to die first the soldiers are always mm-hmm. the cannon fodder and yeah there's a point to say that they are willing to sacrifice themselves to protect these other people but in this movie they were legitimately just, dying they weren't sacrificing just themselves dumber i think yeah 
And uh, the camera yeah, girl. I don't know. The camera girl should not have survived. Um, no. There was no reason for her to still be alive at the end of it. She had no skills and yet survived the whole thing. Well, and so did one of the camera guys, right? Yeah. The guy who's mute. Uh, yeah, Foggy. Is that Foggy? Yeah, that's who. Okay. I always yeah, get from, him, from Daredevil. him, Opie, and. Except with Chris Farley. <laughs> not Chris Farley. Him, the guy that plays Opie from Sen- Sons of Anarchy, and the guy oh. who played the what? boyfriend from Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, Harvey? Yeah. Those three, I they always get confused in my head. I, 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 that makes no sense to me. They're like three very different looking people. No way. Not that different. Hmm. But anyways, so Katniss is leaving the revolution. PETA gets saved. The president lets him get saved because he has yes. brainwashed him into hating Katniss. When he sees Katniss, he tries to kill her. Strangles he her. He chokes her out. And then gets hit in the back of the head. And that's the end of the first movie. And, oh, so I actually, Except that's not the end. There's like ten, there's like one extra minute that didn't need to be there. It really should have, as soon as he got hit in the so, back of the head and it cuts to black, credits should have rolled. Yeah, I agree. He was super vicious. Like, Where's that fire been, Peta? You got to be brainwashed to, to show it? You've been in two Hunger Games already. Where's that fire at? Second, he straight up gra- grabs Katniss and throws her across the room like a hundred pound bag of flour. Yeah. I was like, there's that training. <laughs> now we're seeing it. <laughs> that, I still, I still hate that. It's the dumbest. No, it's really dumb. It's the dumbest thing. Of an a, an idea for a character trait that because he picks up a sack of flour once a day, maybe he's really strong. I don't care if he's doing it once an hour. That's it's not enough. Because like, and it's I pick it's, up my kids. It's a hundred pounds, maybe four times in a day, and they're like thirty pounds. So oh, I should be we way get it. stronger. You love your kids. <laughs> it should be way stronger than Peta. Yeah, according to that logic. Like, we should never stop getting stronger because yeah. these kids never stop growing. 100-pound bags of flour don't get any bigger. Yeah. Stupid PETA. Your stupid face. Why was he so skinny in these movies? Like, he like... Because he's not a big guy. He's a small guy. But they, like... the They probably have him on double rations. But he was, like, unnaturally skinny, and I think they did it all with CGI. Yeah. When I first saw him, it kind of... he his His face looked sunken. Yeah. And I know the first, and, in the first one, the point was he was being tortured and slowly getting starved right. and stuff like that. So it makes sense, but like, there was something so unnatural about his face the entire time that was just like, kind of upsetting to look at. It almost felt like, um, someone, like if you see someone on drugs. Yeah. Like, their face just, they just, you could just tell, you know? Yep. So, I don't know, it's, I guess that was intentional or they went a little too far with it or maybe he was on drugs. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. It's like the uh, Quinn from uh, Dexter. There was that one season where he was clearly on drugs. (laughs) No, that dude was like not only on drugs, but like also like I think he was like anorexic. Yeah. That was weird. I could not get used to that. No. That looked too weird for me. It was he he was it was shockingly different from season to season. That when he went from It was ups it was upsetting. Like a normal looking guy to like just a regular guy. Cheek like you can see all his face bones. <laughs> he looked like he probably weighed like a hundred and thirty pounds. Yeah. Probably. It's like that is scary. <clears throat> and but the thing is, so none of that was any CGI. That was just him. Yeah, <laughs> which is even more frightening. Has anyone seen him lately? He might have disappeared by now. So basically, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't even know where we're at at this point. They're fighting the revolution. Yeah, Peta. They want to kill Snow. They they got Peta back. They got Annie back. 
Um, and what was the other girl? Joanna. Joanna. Joanna's bald, which I don't remember. I assume Why? it's in the book, but that was also another really bad CGI choice. They CGI'd her hair off her head, and it would just look very unnatural. Like it looked uh, fuzzy. She like uh, well, she didn't have a room for a brain. The top of her head is so low <laughs> compared to her forehead. <laughs> There's supposed to be more head up there, and they just like... You need nope. more brain room. <laughs> oh, man. I, 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 like, watching these all back-to-back again, I really have not enjoyed. Yeah, Cause, I'm, I'm with you. Because they get worse. They get worse. They do. From each one. I, I, I remember not enjoying these movies as much as like the first two yeah. when they first came out. Mm. But like even, but like they were still decent. But even now, I was watching the uh, part two yesterday and I got about halfway through it and I, I was watching it with Chris. I was like, I gotta take a break. I can't keep watching this right now. <laughs> like it's too much for me. <laughs> it is so, it's so uninteresting. Yeah. Well, that was the other thing. I was like, I, I got to go do something else for a little bit. I told my wife, I have to watch part three, part two today. And she looked at me like I was a dumb person. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a different look that she usually gives you when she thinks you're dumb? Yeah, this isn't the normal one. This is like extra. Ooh. Mm. But, oh man. So, Katniss, it's, 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 Katniss becomes a super soldier. Gale becomes a super yeah, soldier. Yeah. For no reason. There's zero reason but, why Gale is a super soldier. But he is. No, none at all. Because I, I wonder, though, if he could even throw the flower bags. No, no way. Like, there's been no mention he of He can it. hardly shoot a and crossbow. Like, if that was a talent, if that was a talent, he def- they would definitely talk about it. Yeah, he can't shoot a crossbow. He can't carry the flower. He He's really bad at everything he does. He was my favorite until this movie. And he became useless. Also, there's a good chance he's just a straight up murderer. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, he, yeah, he goes off the deep end on this one. But they, um, they go to the Capitol. They assemble a band, a band, a crew. A merry, a merry band of gentlemen. <laughs> and, uh, uh, of mostly victors and a group of soldiers. But the capital, so they're storming the capital, trying to get to, um, snow. Snow. Thank you. I want to say Rose. Trying to get to snow and snow White has Rose, man. set up traps, which are basically the Hunger Games. And I couldn't have said it better myself. Finnick says, <laughs> welcome to the 76th Hunger Games. And it was a terrible, terrible line. It was a terrible line, and it was delivered by a face so punchable at the time that I turned. I think that's about where I turned the movie off. I was like, "This is really dumb right now." You, I got it. Why do you want to punch Finnick? No, I don't want to punch him in general. But the face that he made when he made that line, oh, because like, he oh, knew it was stupid. No. He knew. He knew. <laughs> it was, he was a like, dumb I got to do something with this, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to make a choice. <laughs> They're like, Finnick, please stop making that face. Just say the line. He's like, I can't just say the line. So the group runs into a building. Here, I want to – really quick. I want to talk about the my issue with these pods, right? Uh-huh. So they have uh, the, the, the device hollow. called the hollow, yeah. which shows the location of all known pods. Yes. So there's all these pods plus – and they've made – mention at least four different times – that there's probably new ones yeah, that aren't even registered yet. Yeah. If, if, if that map that they had was true, they should have been running into a pod every 10 steps. Yeah. That's they what, were, there was so many. That's literally what they, they only, said. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so like they knew that they should have, but I felt like they barely came across only a few. They came across the black goose. Goose? Is goose a word? Goose. The the black I think it's geese. I feel like goose is actually in this context is a good word for what that stuff was because it was it's gooey, gooey ooze. ooze. <laughs> it's a black <laughs> goose <laughs> that if you touch it, it turns into Spit chains that goose. pull you that apart. Well, like I didn't. I never got that. Why did that happen? 
Um, it doesn't make sense. It almost looked like it could have been mechanical as well, though. Yeah. I don't know. So there was that. There was the fire, which was the first one that we saw. Mm-hmm. And then we saw the... It was like a turret like at one the, point, right? The turrets, yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Like, that's three across... I, I want to say... Maybe I'm thinking of something else. That they said, like, 75 blocks, well, right? Well, they had to go 75 blocks, but they did most of it underground. Most of it or... Half of it, what are we talking here? I think most of it. So, <clears throat> okay. They, Either way, they should have encountered 20 pods before even going underground. Well, the issue, well, the thing is, they went in as a propo team, obviously, make propos. And so the army, the resistance, had already gone through and removed a lot of the pods. So they were going into relatively safe areas that had already been cleared, but the potential was they could still encounter some pods. But the map they had still implied, they were still acting like the ones on their map were active. Yeah. Not like this is where they used to be. There might be a couple left. But that was when they decided to get away from the safe area. Yeah, I don't know. When they decided to go there underground. Not only, there was so many, there should have been, they should have ran into them a lot more, but they should have ran into them like multiples. Yeah. Well, that, the way that that thing looked like it was set up. Like, I feel like the book not just one really at a time. hit on it. Like, I feel like the, the book was really focused on them encountering pods. The pods felt like a wasted opportunity that. Yeah, they should have been a lot more and a lot bigger issue. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the point of making a movie, right? Now you have this chance to make these really visually interesting things. And Mm -hmm. they kind of blew it on that end. They would rather. Yeah. They would rather blow up a building, show you the entire thing from the character's point of view, than make you watch the characters watch it on TV. (laughs) <laughs> the whole thing again everything you just saw you have to watch again the characters reacting to it and it's just like mm-hmm. really guys like do we have to yeah. watch this twice wasn't even impressive and it didn't make sense it's, they, it's, they showed it's like they showed them <sighs> running into the building and then they didn't it's like watching basket case and then Having to watch a reaction video of you watching Basket Case. Did you watch it? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I only assume that's what it's like. <laughs> um. So yeah, no, it just it was it was it was a wasted opportunity. So they get through the tunnels, and then it turns into a horror movie for about fifteen minutes. Well, okay, so. Real quick, I want I want to go back when <laughs> you know you're allowed to talk about this stuff when we're at the place. I you went too fast. Oh, sorry. Because I think this is I I to be honest I don't even remember if this is in the part one or two when she gets shot. Part that, one that was or number, two. Part two. That was two. Yeah. Okay. That okay. So and I have a theory that group, about that. I I think that was supposed to be the end of part one, but. Because oh, Philip really? Seymour Hoffman died, they had to use some of his scenes to pad out the second one. Oh, that could be. Which I want to point out, he's. I so I think he's probably one of the best things about these two movies. Woody Harrelson and Philip Seymour Hoffman. Uh-huh. Well, really, the last three movies, yeah, are the best parts about these movies. Yeah, I agree. Um. But I, I feel like uh, Donald Sutherland does a decent job of being a creepy old man, yeah. bad guy. Yeah, it's hard to it's it's uh, it's always hard for me to enjoy someone who's doing something so obnoxious. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like he definitely nailed the character. He was a jerk, like and you hate him. So yeah. as an he's, actor, that means he's great. Good job. Yeah. But as a viewer um, watching it, it's like. Oh, I don't like your character at all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I okay. So that group that they encounter when she gets shot—who mm-hmm. is that? 
I, I, District I, I, 2. I, I don't remember. So why did they shoot her? Because they're because they like in between. They're the they're where the peacekeepers are getting pulled from. So they're right. like they have a stake in the district or in the capital. They their lives are better because of the capital than they are because of the resistance. Yeah, like even though their lives suck, the resistance taking over. Probably means their lives are going to get worse, especially yeah, that's true. if they lose. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's fine. Fast forward, back to where we were. Uh, yeah, so they go through the underground tunnel, and it turns into a horror movie, which I thought was like a, a good mix of I Am Legend and uh, something else. Yeah, which I thought was done pretty well. Like it was pretty suspenseful. Until they get to the end oh, for sure. and they get into the hand to hand fighting with those things. And that, yeah. none of that felt believable. No? No, because it was just like. Uh, it felt believable up until, uh, the point where any of them survived. That's what I mean. Like, I'm glad Finnick died at that point because if he would have survived, it would have been really bad. But. Yeah. The, it was like, oh, they're so dangerous. They're so dangerous. Oh, I fell down. They pulled me down, but I got saved, and now I have a long time to get up and get to freedom. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was like the threat was so imminent until they were safe for a second, and then they were safe for a very long time. And it felt like, oh, if they're really this threatening, you wouldn't really have a chance. Like, when Finnick is going up the ladder and gets pulled down, that seems like mm -hmm. that should have happened to everybody. Yeah, yeah. There, there really shouldn't have been any combat, like because you all would lose. Yeah, it should have just been them running and like just not stopping and trying to escape, and then Finnick being the last one in line gets pulled back. Yeah. But or even what if even if he got into the knife fight with them, right? So they yeah. they're running, they're climbing up the stairs. He gets knocked down, and he's like knife fighting with one. And then starts climbing up the stairs and gets pulled down. Like that would be believable. Like one person. Yeah, but not taking on four or five of them at a yeah, time. Yeah. Like one person standing up to one and like barely getting out of it and then like trying to escape and losing. That would, that would make sense. But them all just like being capable to fight them off. It wasn't, wasn't very believable. Yeah. I didn't buy it. Um, but they go to Tigress's house next. Well, I was so, I want to talk about the, the beams of light that turn you into <laughs> what? <exactly>? Minecraft blocks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some cubes. That was terrifying. Yeah. You no, know, I, I felt like that would have been better if it was slower paced. Had you not had, uh, the peacekeeper shooting at you and making you sprint mm -hmm. through all of that. Like, if they were being having to be more calculated about dodging those things and if it would have killed more than one person, I think that yeah. would have been a really stressful element. But because they add in the well, saws the is, and the peacekeepers, yeah. it, like, really uh, yeah. diluted the, Took away the from tension. Because yeah. mm -hmm. they were just dodging them. They, there was no... They did not feel threatening at all after the first person died. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. It was that was a weird uh element. But either way, they get to Tigress's house. And then and... while they're there, they're hiding out <laughs> and they find out that President Snow is inviting everyone into the capital. And yeah, all the, yeah, which giving them safe haven. Uh, which <laughs> Now, was he doing it to be good? Uh, I'm sure he had some kind of ulterior motive. But they never, they never fleshed that out, right? We have no idea I'm why sure that, he was doing that. To make shields? Make it so they can't bomb him? I don't know. Or Maybe. To what he thought. But I'm saying, you know, like, that they in the book and in the movie, they never explain why he invited everyone in. Because it makes it look like... Yeah, I don't recall. That he invited them in to bomb them and then double bomb them. 
But we find out yeah. that that was actually President Coin, who, mm-hmm. who is Julian Moore, who I could not stand. No, she bugs me. Yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not the biggest Julianne Moore fan, especially when she's no. like a villainous person. Kingsman, Golden Circle. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm just not a fan of her in general, so she bothers yeah. me. But uh, yeah, so all the people are flooding the capital. And then a, what appears to be a peacekeeping, uh, or not, yeah, peacekeeper ship flies overhead and drops these little, little mini packages with little sounds. Clearly bombs, right? You see that, you hear beep, 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 beep. You're not gonna reach up and be like, oh, gifts from the capital. After they oh, take in your you kids. For the bombs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you, you're, you would not be so welcoming. Bombs have been going off, people have been fighting, and then, Metal containers that are beeping are falling at your head. You would not. And then boom. <laughs> yeah. So they all get blown up. Then medics run in to take care of the people. And then a second set of bombs blows them all up. And yeah. It turns out that that was Gail's idea. And it ends up getting Primrose killed. Katniss's sister. So, yeah. So they talk about doing that exact thing uh, earlier in the movie when they're planning their attack. Yeah. And basically, I thought everyone was like, no, that's not, you can't do yeah, that. Yeah, it's evil. Or you shouldn't do that, this and that. Eh, they do it anyways. Yeah. Gail really goes off the deep end in this movie, like I was saying before. And I think maybe maybe to make it easier, right? Cause well, that's what the it first was. two movies... The first two movies, you're like, oh, Team Gale and Team Peta. Who are we going to pick? Team Gale, first the, three movies, for sure. And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, no, not Team Gale. I will not be affiliated with that team. There's a, um, <clears throat> there's a moment when they're going into Tigress's house, and uh-huh. it's right after Katniss kissed Peta to get him to start moving. Uh, yeah. I, I have to assume this is intentional and that it was symbolic. But there is a wanted sign like, behind Katniss that has a picture of Gale that fades yeah. into a picture of Peta. Oh, okay. It's like yeah. now her intentions have changed. She's finally given up Peta, or Gale and is now decided on Peta. That was her switching from Team Gale to Team yeah. Peta. Um. Yeah, he kind of, I, I don't know if I want to say he becomes unlikable, but his decisions are definitely suspect. Like, he's he's part of the group that's willing to do whatever it takes to win, which, fine, but if you're, if you're going to do the same things that your enemy's doing, which is why you're fighting your enemy to begin with, then you're no better than the enemy. Yeah. Which is, and, and, and which is pretty much what they say. Yeah, I... I, I feel like they really could have just left Gail being a good person. You didn't need to clear the field for her to decide. Yeah, like he could have, he could have been, yeah, okay, cause at the, at the end, right, they talk about how he's training or doing, you know, whatever. He could have still done all that and then like we not hate him so yeah. much. Well, he could have, he, he, she should have just had to decide. Like, that's the, that's, that's what I, I really don't like about stories when they have these, uh, elements of like, uh, a love triangle type thing. They always have to ruin one character so you're happy that they pick the other. You're like, oh yeah, like, it should be like, controversial. when we first met, right? He's in love with the one girl the entire time. But then the end of the movie, they're like, oh, everything you loved about her was actually the other girl that you're now with. And it's like, why? Yeah, yeah. That's unnecessary. Just make it a hard choice, exactly. and it's more interesting. Yeah, may, it, there doesn't have to be a right or wrong choice either. Like, not everyone has to agree on the final outcome. Yeah, Peta or Gail could hate Katniss. Like, instead of, instead of Katniss hating Gail, right? That, I mean, because that's how this ends. She could Pretty have much, picked yeah. Peta and Gail been like, you know what? 
screw you. Like I'm, I'm yeah, here. I'm done. I'm Forget this. Glad I killed your sister. <laughs> <laughs> like it did on purpose. I mean, that kind of defeats the point that we're making. But yeah, I mean, he, I guess he could go kill her right then, right after that. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I don't know. Weird decisions, yeah. but whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, so she, sister is dead, yeah. but <laughs> she she, blow she up. has a moment with President Snow because before they get overtaken, he has a chance to like they capture her and uh, take care of her for a little bit, right? And Snow talks to Katniss yes. and says, like, you know, we both were duped. We were too busy focusing on each other. We didn't realize the real enemy was President Coyne this whole time, which I... Oh, no. See, I think you have it the other way around. This is when they took over the Capitol and then she met him in that garden? Yeah. Yeah, I think he he's already captured and they just let him hang out in his garden. Mm. And she went to go. She went to go see him because remember she was she was trying to get in, and they stopped her. And then that other lady was like, "No, she can come in." Like they'd already taken over the Capitol. I took that to and be it, Katniss was going was captured and was visiting was under Snow's control. And then the next one was once they came over and took everything over, because then he was a prisoner. I think so. I think he was a prisoner at that point. Maybe. This is after the bombings, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And then she she's free because she, she's walking and she goes to go see him. You, you know what I'm talking uh-huh. about when they try to stop yeah. her? And that lady says, oh, no, she can pretty much go wherever she wants, like on my order. I guess. Like, yeah, because maybe. She maybe was, right. maybe she's right. in charge. I, I'm probably just wrong. And I think they just let – they they had Snow prisoner and they let him hang out in his, his garden. Yeah. But anyway, so she goes and talks to him. And he gives what I thought was a great speech of just this idea of like, coin is the real enemy. Like, I know I'm yeah. a terrible person. I get it. Like, that's clear. But. Yeah, he said, you, you can, you know, whatever, but like, I'm not going to bomb my own people. Yeah. He said, although that was brilliant, even I wouldn't do yeah. that. And, uh, it sets up coin who you're uneasy with the entire time. Who is Yeah, she's already kind of showed flashes of not being exactly what she portrays. Yeah. And I have an ulterior motive. So that happens and then they she coin sets up a meeting with all the victors, which again, not really sure why the victors get so much authority in this world. Especially now. It seems kind of dumb. Yeah. But whatever. And she says, "We're going to hold a symbolic Hunger Games and use the kids of the capital to teach him a lesson. But we have to vote on it. <laughs> yeah. So within hours of taking over, they're, she's doing the exact same thing. But you got the, the one thing that I thought about that you have to remember is they don't, does anyone from District 13 isn't going to have the same feeling towards the Hunger Games because they never actually had to participate. So, they don't have that deep lying hatred for it, right? They've just been kind of watching from the outside while all their kids have been safe. Yeah, but you would know. I think if you were outside of it, you would extra know that this is really bad. Yeah. I think if you were a part of it as the capital who enjoys it, obviously they don't think it's bad. And then if you are in the districts, you're going to hate it, but you're going to be so used to it. But I think if you're District 13 and you watch it happen from afar, you will be more appalled and like, how is this even happening? How is anyone letting this go on? And so for District 13 to think, oh, we're going to hold a symbolic hunger, hungers game to teach them a lesson, I think is, is insane. It doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. It's another clearing the table idea. Like imagine, imagine you didn't have that. That idea. Let's do a symbolic hungers game. You just have coin t- hungers game. <laughs> you just have coin take over, right? She becomes president. She's like, I- I'm going to be the acting president for now. We'll hold an election yeah. later, but I'm taking over. Uh, Snow talks to Katniss 
and like gives this idea to Katniss that coin is the real enemy. And then Katniss kills coin. How much stronger of a choice would that be than, oh yeah, she's clearly the villain because she wants to do the Hunger Games still. You know, like, yeah. I don't know, I just, I just really, I really dislike when they do that. When they make you think, oh, this is clearly the bad person now. Look how quickly they shifted to evil. Yeah, it, it, it should be more of a internal battle of, of what you need to do. Like, yeah, you know, there's coin and I, I think she's bad, but I'm not sure, but I'm also getting my information from the guy that I've been trying to kill, you yeah. know, for the last however long. Like, I don't know. Is he playing me? Like, yeah. And will you also have it, the it, black guy, the black soldier who's like, don't trust coin, don't trust anyone, you know, do what you have to do. Oh, yeah, bugs. And like, you could have had, you could have established a lot more doubt and it been really nuanced about why she did it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I, I just think it would have been um, a, a stronger choice on Katniss's part. Katniss, so that's the thing. Katniss didn't make any decisions. She didn't murder anyone. She didn't make any choices. The movie forced her to do every single thing. She had no choice at any point to make a hard choice. She just always did whatever was right in front of her. And that's why she's so frustrating of a character in the movies. Where the books, she is actively deciding what she needs to do and how she should do it and how she should go about it. You get to see that. In the movies, you don't. Yeah, I, that's not really this movie's fault. That's just kind of the fault with movies in general. No, Well, again, I, I mean, I don't remember how it shook out in the book with Coin taking over and if she wanted to do it in Symbolic Hunger's game or not. Yeah, it was pretty much like that in the book, if I remember. But it, to me, I feel like the books handled it better. Where the movies made such a hard shift that it was like jarring. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess they have to try to simplify it for people. Yeah. But anyway, so Katniss says she wants to kill Snow, lines up to shoot Snow, Kills Coin instead. Snow starts laughing. Crowd goes and surrounds him, and I assume kills him, right? Oh, he did. <laughs> um, and then she is just let go. The new president pardons her. Fade to black. Uh-huh. Fade back in unnecessarily. Her and Peter have been married. They got two kids. She is talking to the baby who woke up crying. She said, oh, did you have a bad dream, baby? I have bad dreams too. Don't worry. One day I'll explain to you why I have them and why they never go away. <laughs> like, why, why would you say that to a baby? You don't need to. Uh, that baby got to know things don't get any easier. <laughs> uh, I really dislike that ending. Um, yeah, that was kind of weird, but it's, I don't know. How else would you end this movie? How else would you end the whole series? What would you do? Uh, kill Coin and take the Nightlock pill <laughs> and just have her die. There you yeah. go. Like, all right, I'm yeah. done. I like it. No, I think I think she could have been set free. I think she could have gone back home, and I think they could have left it open about her and Peta starting a relationship or not. Yeah, that's true. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not disappointed by the ending. No. I guess I'll say it's 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 decent. Yeah. Well, that was uh, the Hunger Games, uh, Mockingjay Part One and Two. That completes the series. I am pretty happy. Our anthology. <laughs> well, it's not an anthology, yeah. but uh, whatever. It completes the series. Pretty happy to be done with it. We will be back uh, next Saturday with Snowpiercer, but if you want to listen to it now, yes. you can go over to Patreon. For a dollar, you can get access awesome. to all our episodes two weeks in advance. Correct. And you can follow us on Twitter at IcingThatPod. Like us on Facebook. <laughs>